Welcome back everyone to another Coach Blaker video. Today we're gonna to be looking at Law Please, season 2023. Uh, ranked, if you guys don't know, is starting tomorrow. I do have a series playlist of all four of their videos, right? I put four videos on the channel. This is the fourth of that series. The link will be in the description below for the playlist. If you guys don't know who I am, my name is Coach Blaker. I've been professionally coaching for 10 years, diamond in all roles, diamond two peak, and we're gonna be looking at what Riot has planned, and I'm gonna be giving my thoughts and, and what, how I feel about everything. So, I mean, let's just hop into it. Nothing else to say. Let's go. Let's go, whoa. I'm hype. Hey, everyone. I'm Riot Brightman, executive producer of League of Legends. And I'm here on behalf of the entire League dev team to welcome you to season 2023. First off, I want to wish you all a happy start of a new season. And I want to thank you for the marks you've all made on League from the hype plays to the big brain moments and all the ways you've helped make League what it is today. We have a lot to share with you, including our final updates on Ari and Aurelian Soul, some upcoming skin thematics, an update on Ranked, and a sneak peek at some champions we'll be releasing later this year. But before we get into what's coming, I wanna share a quick recap of this year's preseason. So let's go. Let's do it. Chemtech Drake has had a major glow up. In her new and improved form, instead of resurrecting friends and foes, she now mutates all the plants on the map with Chemtech empowerments. They still do what you're used to, only now with a twist. And each time you defeat the Chemtech Drake, she'll grant stacking tenacity plus healing and shielding power. If you claim the soul, you'll deal increased damage and receive damage resistance when at low health. <laughs> We also added new pings to help you communicate with your team more effectively, including the push, bait, and all in. Better pings mean clearer calls on what you want to accomplish as a team. My personal favorite is using the hold ping right after my whole team dies defending Baron. And it wouldn't be preseason without some changes in the jungle. You now have a path recommender, an updated camp patient system, and new jungle companions to help you conquer the scary monsters of the jungle. Last, but certainly not least, we have changes like a new rune recommender, some new in-game items, as well as a few returning favorites, and a few changes to ARAM, like new Hextech gates that transport you down the map, falling towers and the rubble that they create, and some more balanced changes to keep ARAM games feeling fair and fun for both teams. Now that we've covered preseason changes, Let's talk about some of the new things coming this season. Oof. After a year of waiting, we're finally releasing Ari's ASU. Before he continues, <clears throat> I just want to let you guys know, I don't see a difference. Like, unless there's specific ability changes that, that I haven't really read up on, I don't see a difference between that Ari and the Ari before. I mean, maybe there's a little difference, but... Uh... And they need to show comparisons, and I'll probably see the difference. Our remains obviously know a difference, though. Her base, her skins, new VFX, splashes, and all nine tails have been updated oh. and will be out for all of you in just a few weeks. Hmm. We can't wait to see what you think of her new look. Oh, her tail does things. Huh. I, don't, I have to look at that one. I don't really know that much. There are a few <clears throat> champions who haven't gotten a new skin in a while, including Aurelian Soul, Ivern, Kled, and Callista. And I have some good news. They'll all be receiving a new skin this year. Oh! Callista's skin is coming to us from a world of beauty and magic, hmm. nature and majesty. The Fairy Queen presides over the courts of the Four Seasons, and the Fae who reside there are empowered by the natural world and the magic within it. I don't know if that Not all within the Fae world is light and well. beauty. After we leave the Fey Realms, we're returning to a fan favorite. So I'm, I'm saying that they haven't, that's probably just like a concept. You know, they have probably other models and, and things like that of it, but I don't really think that fits her. But what I've noticed is Riot does try to like, if you don't know, skins are supposed to be different, like, um, real, they're alternate realities of a champion. So I do get sometimes they do like to jet into other like realms, so to speak. But I don't really like when they go too far. You know, if a champ's all about being dead and then there's a happy champ, it's kind of like, 
Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, based off what goes on. With Callista, it looks cool visually, but it just doesn't feel like Callista. But again, what do I know? Right? I'm just giving my opinion. A lot of you guys might like it and love it, but I just I just feel like that on Callista might not be the way it looks right now. It could, it could change a little bit to look more like Callista and feel more like Callista. Callista is one of the champions that I love uh, the most, so I'm just I'm just saying my opinion. A little bit more adorable than beautiful. A skin line that brought you Pugma, Corky Corgi, and York in a cat onesie is coming back. <laughs> so open up some catnip, dust off your chew toys. Who is that? Is that Renekton? That's the only person I can think with a blade like that. Renekton? Really? Huh. I think that's Renekton. Maybe that's a new champ. Because more champions are getting That's played, obviously. These are just a few of the new things we have planned for season 2023. I'll hand it over to Riot Oberon, who will share our plans for Ranked. Again, I'm not BMing their skins. They're, these are just concepts, obviously. They're not done. I know that they're not done. I'm not trying to harp on it. Uh, but sometimes, you know, some skins just don't fit the champs. Y'all know this. Y'all ain't hey, everyone. Y'all know. I'm Chris Roberts, also known as Riot Oberon, the project lead for the Game Loop team. We work on things like champ select, matchmaking, and the various Q types. Oh, matchmaking. Normals. I'm hyped for that. That means we're not just focused on ladder grinders. We're also here for players who just want to have a good time with friends. Anybody care about that? Last year, we shared a blog update with some of our upcoming plans, including anonymized champion select, pick order swapping, and the loadout recommender. Since then, we've also been working on a few other projects. And there's one big thing I want to talk to you about today, the mid-year ranked reset. I thought he said mid-deer. I was like, what? <laughs> ranked splits have been in the game for a few years, but until now, they're just a way to separate the single ranked season into thirds to help folks pace their progress. Starting this year, the two ranked splits will have a full ranked reset in between with rewards to match. Here's the thing. A lot of players come back to League at the start of the season, ready for their climb to their ranked goals. Mm -hmm. But when we look at the data, it doesn't actually take the whole season for players to hit their peak rank if they've been playing consistently every patch. Right. If you don't take your foot off the gas once you start your climb in January, you'll probably reach the peak of your climb around halfway through the year. That's what I always tell people. I always tell people the system's kind of designed for you to hit your next rank like every year. If I'm bronze last year, then I should be silver this year. If I'm silver this year, I should be uh, gold next year. And this is just like an average player, right? This is somebody who's just playing League of Legends. They don't really look at many guys. Maybe they look at a few here and there, but they don't get coaching and things like that. They typically do reach that if they continue to play. But if you stop playing, like, let's just say, oh, I hit my rank. I stopped playing for the rest of the year. You're going to struggle getting back to your rank that you were, especially because players got better. And while you were just kind of having your cake and eating it too, players are getting better. They're grinding harder. So you might find you might have a hard time coming back this year trying to get your rank. It might be really rough, but they do have a new matchmaking system. So I hope we talk some more about that. Again, I'm going to be pausing this video. If you guys haven't watched it, go ahead and, and watch it on their channel. I'm just explaining my thoughts and my processes through it. So I know you guys might be a little frustrated, but I'm just warning you now. Um, <clears throat> and then there are really good players that will like skip ranks like that because they're just that on to getting better, right? Players that tend to look at a lot of guides, players that tend to get coaching, players that tend to look at their own replays. Like these are the like the really good players that will, will go from like silver to gold in one year or gold to diamond in one year because they're focused, they keep playing, they, they keep trying to do their thing. And it's funny because the players usually think that the person that plays the most games are the ones that climb, which is funny because there's a lot of players that stay the same rank for years playing 200, 400, 500, 600, 700, 1,000, 2,000 games in the same spot for years. Where there's players that are, like I said, are really good that they'll hop from like gold to diamond in just like 300 games. And so it's not about how you play, or it's not about how much you play, it's about what you get out of each game you play. And so the system itself, if you continue to play and you're just an average player, you should climb each year, theoretically, right? So, I mean, it just come, it's kind of cool to think about it, and it's kind of cool to hear him explain it that way. You can get After back to that, your peak, and then... Things can get a little rough. Yeah. For players at higher ranks, the middle of the year can be a stress fest of playing just enough to avoid decaying or demoting. Mm -hmm. And once players realize they're not steadily climbing, many of them either drop out of ranked or turn to smurfing. Right. I see that a lot, too. 
people do drop out of rank because oh i'm not climbing that there's like a three of them there's people that drop out because oh, i'm not climbing this is too hard games are too coin flip and a lot of the times that's just people making excuses usually those are the people that tend to quit a lot in life um not to be a mini body but um you know sometimes it gets to be too much and then you have the players that do turn to smurfing because they're like bro f this um <laughs> and then they'll start smurfing uh, sometimes people will just hit their peak and then just stop. It doesn't even, they're, they're not even quitting. Sometimes it's just like, well, I'm where I want to be at. I'm done. And they don't really have an urge to climb farther. And then uh, you just have the players that will reach their peak and then just kind of sit there. And those are the players that will play hundreds to thousands of games and just kind of sit there and just play over and over and over and over and over again. And it's kind of weird because it's like, well, why, why are you playing this? I know it's fun, but like, don't you want to climb? It's one thing if you quit, or if it's one thing if you stop playing altogether, but to continue to play and then not want to achieve anything higher, it's just kind of like weird. You're playing to waste time. And I feel like if what they're gonna do is gonna remedy that, so that way you don't get those players in your game, because the players that tend to do that aren't, they, they don't perform better. Why? Because they're, they're, they are definitely comfort, comfortable in their rank. You know, it's like, well, I'm gold and I'm usually gold. And even if I'm playing repeatedly and I'm not climbing anywhere, I'm still gold. And so I'm comfortable. I'm not going to play better than I should because I'm gold. You know, does that make sense? It's like I'm already this level. Why would I try to get higher? I'm just going to keep playing at this level. And what that means is that it makes it a lot harder for you to climb because if the enemy team, all of them are trying to climb and you have one or two players on your team, that's like, well, I'm, I'm chilling. You know, I don't care. Whatever. I'd cube, cube, just play. I'm not going to moat then it's gonna be really hard for you to climb. So they need to do something where it's like, the players that are on your team are gonna be players that want to climb, not players who just wanna mindlessly play thousands of games and go nowhere, you know what I'm saying? So I definitely think that that should be something that they should do. And you know, I hope mid scope does, or this mid like year thing helps because if they reset your rank, you gotta try again later. So I, I don't know, let's see, let's see. Neither of these things are great for fair matchmaking or enjoyable league experiences especially for players starting their climb later in the season. I just said that. It's not fair for matchmaking. <laughs> yeah. All in all, there are honestly a lot of reasons why most other games, other Riot games included, don't have year-long ranked seasons. So this year, we're getting with the times. When Split 2 starts, it won't be as heavy a reset as the one in January. We're not introducing a second preseason, so the game won't change dramatically enough to warrant making you re-earn your rank to the same extent. And if you've got something keeping you AFK for the first half of the year, don't worry. The mid-year reset is even less significant if you haven't played many games since January. Mm. We know this is a huge change, really? but it's one we think will help keep League feeling modern and fun while addressing a few of the pain points we've seen over the years. So he's saying that if you play more, the mid-reset will help you more. If you play less, it won't help you that much. It won't be as impactful. That's crazy. I wonder if they'll go in more detail about that. I'll make a video for sure if they make a dev blog about it, but that, I, I'm, I'm curious to know what that means. Okay, that was a lot. Let's end things on a high note by talking about the shiny stuff. Rewards. Each split, you can earn the full ranked reward suite. Icons and emotes, ranked borders, and a ranked skin. Yes, that means there will be two skins for rank this year. We're also adding in some extra rewards for your climb as you progress on your rank journey. In addition to this, we're also removing the gold rank requirement from ranked skins. Now, every ranked player will have the chance to earn the skin moving forward with chromas to match your final rank. The skin will continue to reflect your final ranked achievement, but we want you to also be able to earn it through dedication to climbing. That said, if you're below gold, it won't be as easy as play 10 placements for a free skin. The number of games required to earn the skin is drastically higher below gold, so just because you now can earn it at silver or below doesn't mean you will. I don't like that because the way that he's saying is like, you know, some players are going to, I mean, I like it, but I'm not, I'm obviously not a, a gold or below player, but what I'm hearing and what a lot of players in those ELOs that people in low ELO tend to not want to improve that much. You have very select a few. Usually they'll just play and play and play and play and then eventually they'll climb or if they don't, they'll just sit there forever. But that sounds like a, it sounds like a beaming a lot. I've been coaching for ten years, more than that, honestly, and I I see it. It's I see legit see it, and then I also have climbed all the roles, so I legit see it from every perspective. What I'm saying, I know, and players typically don't care about improving when they're that low. So what I see is going. There are a few, like I just said, 
But what what I, what I think this is going to happen is like, oh, we have to play this amount of many games. Well, let me just go ahead and queue up and rank and play these games. Like, I, I, that seems like such a negative experience. Because it's like, I don't care. As long as I get this many games played, I'm good to go. And that shouldn't be it. Right now, people that are, ha that are stuck 400, 500, 600, 700, 1,000 games, whatever, in the same rank right now, they play ranked because they like to play ranked. What you're doing is inviting players to play ranked. You're like dangling a carrot in front of them, which is fine. But now you're making it say that you don't really have to try to get it. You just got to play games. And so people are just going to go in and play the games. I don't know if you guys have noticed, but towards the end of the season, there's a lot of players that are unranked trying to play ranked now. And the skill gap is like this. It's huge. And so those players that aren't good to play ranked, because ranked and normals are different, they might play 300 normals and play like only 10 ranked. You'll, you'll see it. You'll see a big difference. And so uh, having that go all the time, because of somebody that wants to reach a rank quota for a skin, I just feel like that's going to be a disaster in lower elo. A disaster. So, I, I don't know. Either they need to have players starting to care more about getting better, and those players can actually start climbing and leave those other players in the dust, or people are going to have a horrible time in low ranks. Like, a horrible time. But I hope it doesn't happen. I hope Riot does something to kind of remedy that. But, you know, you're going to have to fail before you succeed, and so we're going to see the, probably the negative aspect of it before we see the positive aspect of it. That wraps things up for me. Up next is Riot Lexical, who's going to talk to you about our plans for champions this year. Thanks, and good luck on your climbs. Thank you. I, I like him. Tell me good luck. I need it. And prayer. Jesus. Hi, everyone. Lexi, Riot, Lexical, Gal. The is she a Lux player? I'm just going to say it right now. If any of you got, let me know. Is she a Lux player? Because she already looks like a Lux player pop popping out like that. Ain't nobody that happy to play League of Legends. Let me... I'm just saying. I'm sorry. Back to the product lead for champions here. She is too happy. I'm going to talk a bit about some of the new champions we have planned for this year. I like her though. But before that, I want to touch on our plans for the year overall. This season, we're focusing a bit more on smaller updates to the parts of the champion roster that has been left in the dust. I know why she's not happy. I know why she's happy. It's because she doesn't play League of Legends. You, she don't have the League of Legends eye line. You know, she doesn't have that late night grind, stressed out League of Legends eye line that a lot of play. No. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm stupid. Look, she's smiling. It makes me want to smile. I'm sorry. Let's get I ain't right. We want to continue improving older champions' gameplay fantasies, so we'll be doing more mid-scope updates throughout 2023. And beyond gameplay changes, we'll also be polishing up some of the roster with much-needed VO updates for a few of our older champions, like Nidalee and Varus, both of whom Ooh. cross path with some of our upcoming champions. I would like that. <clears throat> First up this year is Aurelian Souls CGU. In the last lol please, we showed you some of the updated abilities that fans the flame of his dragon fantasy. But we didn't go too deep into the parts of his kit that strengthen his star forging theme. Not only can Aurelian Soul forge stars like a nebula in deep space, but he can now drop them from the sky onto his foes in Summoner's Rift. I like this. Ooh, ouch. As we mentioned before in the last video, his new passive causes all of his abilities to grow in size over the course of the game, including his new ultimate. I mean, what's more satisfying than dropping Ooh, a massive star you forge in outer space on someone's head? We can't wait to see what you all think of the new and improved Star Forger, and we hope I a play lot that. of you will find a new main with him. Oh, I will. After I always like Soul, we'll be releasing some brand new champions. One of our goals for the past few years has been to make sure we have a champion for everyone to enjoy. So we try to have a diverse champion pool that's inclusive of all cultures, genders, and in-game skill levels for every role. And that brings us to our first new champion of the year. Milo? M Milo? Milio? Mal I'm Malayo? super Malayo? excited for I'm all of you to meet our male enchanter <laughs> from Ishtal, displaying an incredible understanding of the fire axiom. At Let me see! Milio uses Milio. fire not to raise cities, but to his wounds. Now he travels to Ishtal Khan, carrying the hopes Let and dreams see. of his family on his back, see. along with his trusty backpack. I'm like a kid. He's about to face the biggest challenge of his young life. 
the Vidalian. Let me see, let me see. His journey to Ishalkan will it. broaden his horizons and introduce him to new people and places, but it'll also bring him closer to Yuntao's darkest secrets. But no matter what challenges come, he'll always bounce back into action and be ready for his next adventure. So it's a kid, champ. Nefari? Yo, tell me that doesn't sound like an Avatar character. Off cuff, sounds like an Avatar character. After we're done with the adorable the blue enchanter, we're moving on to something a bit edgier. I know some of you love complex champions and novel link skill descriptions. But others want to focus on macro play and pounce into action with a straightforward kit. If that sounds like you, good news. Nefiri is a darken for you. Ooh. She's a melee assassin made for those of us who want to focus on the hunt. Oh, I like that. Her slumber, her first objective is to track down her darkened brethren. Her newfound body, or bodies, seems like a cruel twist of fate at first. Bodies. But they prove useful for locating her fellow darken, and as a source of wisdom. After all, it's always better to hunt in a pack. I have some bad news, though. Unfortunately, Nefiri is the only champion this year without a shirt. We know how much you all love abs, so don't worry. We'll be looking for more opportunities next year. Wait, Nefiri is a shapeshifter? Is that what I'm see is that what I'm hearing? He's a shapeshifter? Hmm. We'll see. I knew that was coming. It's been a while since we spoke about everyone's favorite crystal scorpion. The Skarner VGU team has started exploring ways to dial up his scorpion fantasy. At this phase, we're leaving no arthropod hiding stone in turn to find exciting themes, kits, and stories. We'll be releasing a dev blog later this year with more information on his progress. Hmm. Looking further out, we also have a hangry jungler and an artistic mid laner did you just say a hangry jungler? Bro, all junglers are hangry. If you play in jungle, you hangry. I'm just... <laughs> I like her. Looming in the distance. They're a bit too early to talk about at the moment, but look out for future teasers. That's all for me today. I'll hand it back to Riot Brightman for some final thoughts. That pretty much wraps up things for today. But I do have one small update I want to share before we go. For years, you've been asking us for the ability to play League in any language, no matter where you are. Mm. I'm happy to share that later this year, you'll be able to select your language in oh, League settings. That's kind of cool. We hope this makes your experience a little bit more enjoyable. But does that mean we can like hear the different languages or is it just about seeing? I mean, I guess we'll find out later, but if you can hear different languages, I would definitely like to pop in with a different language, play it, see how it works. Like, like I, I, I wanted like an option to do text and then an option to do audio because I would definitely like to flip through them. You know, there's some really cool like languages that champions would sound great in. And I, I want to be able to experience that and then turn it back when I want to. That'd be really cool in my opinion, but I don't know what they're gonna do. No matter where you're playing from or what language you speak. I also want to remind everyone who has Xbox Game Pass to link it to your Riot account. This way, you can unlock every champion for free. The Xbox Pass is OP. You get a 20% experience boost it's as OP. long as it's active. It's OP. It's OP. We have a lot more in store for this year, and we cannot wait to share more later. Thank you so much for watching. Best of luck on your climb, and I'll see you on the Rift. You see, he got he got them rank eye lines. I'm just... <laughs> I'm trolling. Why do you guys watch me? No, I'm, I'm just super hyped. Um, this is the fourth of the series that I created. If you guys haven't seen the first, second, and third, link down in the description below. It's going to link the playlist. But I'm, like, super excited for Ranked. And, I mean, I don't know if you guys know this, but I coach League of Legends. So, of course, I'm excited for Ranked. Um, I just... It's just nice. It, I feel like Riot's actually, like, doing the right thing this year. You know, the year before, the year before, and I think even the year before that, it feels like they kind of got off track. But this year, I feel like they're going on all the angles. They're worrying about players that actually play their champions. They're worrying about, you know, new champs coming out. They're worrying about skin thematics. They're worrying about behavioral. They're worrying about matchmaking. Like, the teams just seem so much more dedicated this time around. And I, and I really do like that, and I really do appreciate that. So just as they said, 
good luck in your ranked climb. If you guys are interested in coaching, I highly recommend you book a session. If you feel stuck, if you feel lost, if you feel like you're not ready, book that session, get ready. So that way you can get, you can ace your placements, get the highest rank you deserve on your placements and easily reach your peak and then go past your peak. So if you are struggling even right now, book that session. Let's get down to it. Let's have you reach your goals. Thank you guys for watching. Good luck on your climb tomorrow. I believe that's when they said it's going to start unless Riot does some weird stuff. It's going to start tomorrow, man. I can't, Good luck to everybody. I just can't say that enough. Good luck, good luck. You guys got this. Of course, watch my videos if you if you need that help or book a session. Peace, peace. Late, late. Have a good rest of your day or night. Thank you guys for doing what? Approaching this like a coach.